Hi, I'm Simone de Rochefort, and I'm a horse girl. For some people, video game horses fade into the background, just another 3D asset on a polygonal plane. But they shouldn't. When there's a horse in a video game, it means someone busted their butt to get it there. And that's because horses are weird, tricky, complex. And even if you don't care about horses, I'm here to convince you that video games are enriched and enlivened when they give horses their due. But why are horses so complicated? That's an easy answer. They're abominations of nature that walk on their fingernails. Let's talk about horse animation. Hi, my name is Alice. I am a game designer and game producer and writer from Zurich, Switzerland. Right now, Alice is working on a ranch sim called Horse Tales Emerald Valley Ranch, but more on that later. For the past three years, I've started writing about horse games as a hobby, and um, I do that on my website, The Main Quest. On The Main Quest, Alice pays special attention to horse movement. First of all, uh, I, I do think it's worth noting that quadrupeds are just very difficult to animate, period. And um, I think that's that's something that every animator and, and game dev learns early on, that like, d d do not do more legs than you absolutely need and two is enough. A two-legged creature, it's, it's mostly going to be this foot and then this foot. Whereas as soon as you have, can I do this with my hand? <laughs> as soon as you have more legs, you have a lot of options and um, quadrupeds have different gates. So, like a horse has the, a four beat walk, which is what I just try to do, but I'm not coordinated enough with my hand. They have a trot, which is like parallel. Par okay, now I can't do this with my hand. Alice is trying to show you something that photographers were obsessed with figuring out in 1878. What those legs do. A walking horse moves all four feet, one after the other. In its second fastest gait, the trot, the horse moves its legs in diagonal pairs. In a gallop, all four feet leave the ground, and each step means the horse's massive weight is supported by a single hoof. Or hoof. Hoof? Hoof. These aren't the only three gates, but they are the three that come naturally to all horses. And honestly, if somebody wants to try animating the tolt, I think they get a medal just for the attempt. It just makes it more complicated. You need to put more thought into when does which leg do what. So yeah, that's, that's just the, the, inherent, uh, the inherent difficulty in, in, in animating quadrupeds. Games tackle these gates with varying degrees of success. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the gates are all there, but the gallop looks choppy, as if the horse is being fast forwarded. This choppiness happens in transitions between gates as well. The horse walks if you nudge the thumbstick and starts to gallop when you press it all the way. But there's a transition animation that speeds up the walk in a way that ends up looking really weird. Nature does not condone it. What's being prioritized here is speed, because the horse is just your transportation. So basically, any pressure on the joystick throws you directly into the fastest gate. It was honestly kind of hard to get footage of the walk, because the game is so adamant that if you're moving forward, you must want to gallop. Compare that with Breath of the Wild. Here the gallop is still really fast, but the animation captures that smooth as water look of a horse running full tilt. Transitions between gates are crisp and clean, done with a single tap of a button, so you're never forced to gallop. Zelda also sells the feeling better, with wind lines when you sprint. And that feeling is really important. There's something compelling about the way a real horse moves. They're powerful, but weightless. Enormous, but bouncy. <laughs> and horses move like that because of how they're built. They're kind of whack creatures regarding how they move um, in, in terms of like, you know, the whole walking on their fingernails uh, business. A horse is so heavy and its legs so slender that they literally should not be able to move as fast as they do. A horse's legs has very, very few muscles on it, or like their, their lower legs do not have muscles on them. Basically, uh, it's a system of tension, tension and release. But they can move this fast because of their crazy tendons. These behave like... Elastic. Like a pogo stick. Like a rubber band. 30 times better than a steel spring. Stretching to allow the joint to drop, but preventing it from collapsing. Alice linked me to a really cool documentary about horse musculature, which is available on YouTube, but fair warning, they do dissect a whole horse in it, and it's a lot to see. You see, you see all of it. 
You see everything. And I will never forget it. Details like this bending in the fetlock don't necessarily make it into games. Like Alice said, this is whack, and developers might play fast and loose with the way that horses distribute their weight and bend their joints. They have this like very springy, um, very springy step where the, the the joints the joints lower and and rise with every step, and that's part of what I find so fascinating about horse horse movement. You know, when you make a simple humanoid animation, um, you can get away with like having one joint in the hand, or maybe even like having a walk like this and having stiff hands. Um, but for a horse, for for the movement to look good, you, you'll have to kind of consider every one of these joints for it to actually actually look good because otherwise you're gonna have some weirdness in it. A prime example of this is in Elden Ring, where Torrent the Horse is one of Alice's pet peeves. Torrent, who is, to be clear, a magical double jumping horse with horns, but bear with me, uses his knees in impossible ways. When you're climbing a hill, Torrent walks on and supports his weight with completely bent knees. But a real horse physically could not do this. Their legs would explode. It's it's as if like imagine imagine a human character just constantly walking in a squat. For a human, that's at least possible. For a horse, it is not. And and even for a human, it would look very weird. For some people, that's not a deal breaker. I honestly didn't notice until I read Alice's very thorough article, and now my life is ruined. For others, horse quality is important from the get-go. And that can extend beyond animation and into treating the horse as an integral part of the narrative. Not just a car with legs, a meat motorcycle, a meter cycle. Assassin's Creed 3 had the, I'm not sure if it was a bug or if it was a feature or if just nobody cared, but when you picked a horse somewhere and then you rode into a different area, like into a city or out of a city or into a different region, after the loading screen, your horse would sometimes have a different color. You know, it's it's not awful, but it's just such a detail where I'm like, explicitly do not feel seen. <laughs> we like making choices in games, and that's why something as seemingly minor as organizing your inventory, putting on a special hat, choosing a pretty horse, helps us feel engaged. That's why it's a missed opportunity when horses aren't treated as individuals, at least a little bit. Red Dead Redemption 2, of course, nails this. There are 19 different horse breeds, with variations in speed, agility, and temperament, combined with tons of different colors, and the ability to give your horse a name, and a makeover! I have to give another shout out here to Breath of the Wild. The horses only have one body type, but some are milder tempered and easy to catch, while others give you attitude. But my favorite thing about them is that the horses have head tracking. So your horse that you chose will actually follow you with its gaze when you move around. All of this makes the horse feel just a little more alive and your choice to tame it a little more meaningful. And that's what separates a good game mechanic from a rote one. It's also part of why Alice maintains that even people who don't care about horses are missing out when games don't do them justice. One one huge component of that is uh, it's just narrative. Um, like we have a few games where horses are treated as characters, and to me personally, those games profit enormously from it. You have the example of Shadow of the Colossus. Imagine Shadow of the Colossus if you just had a horse at every corner and you could just pick up a new horse as you went. Like that 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 would have ruined so much of the emotional impact of that game. Let me tell you about feet. When I first played Breath of the Wild, I got stuck in the canyon between the Tabantha Frontier and Hyrule Ridge. I didn't have enough stamina to climb out, and the moblins were kicking my ass because I was underleveled. But those moblins were on horseback. I caught one and went on a desperate gallop down the canyon, and like so many amazing moments in Breath of the Wild, it felt like I was writing my own adventure story. When I finally escaped and found an inn, I proudly adopted my horse and named him Feet, since that's what he used to save me. You don't get memorable experiences like that with the horses in, for example, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I love that game, but it fails the horse meaningfulness test. Picking your horse is like ordering off a fast food menu, and it has no bearing on the rest of the game's story. Breath of the Wild could have easily gone that same route, but the developers went the extra mile to create the taming mechanic, which is memorable and fun. 
The game that Alice is making right now is a proper horse game, not just a game with horses in it. Horse Tales Emerald Valley Ranch also asks players to bond with their horses, not just ride them. Alice says the horses have different stats and personality traits, and that you can tame and train them as you restore your family ranch's faded glory. It's headed for the Nintendo Switch in winter 2022. But even the things that I've been harping on as flaws can still end up being really charming. For example, Alice, along with the rest of the world, was captivated by Leonard in Elden Ring, the wizened, depressing horse of General Radon. Radon is too huge to ride his beloved horse, so he learned gravity magic to keep himself from crushing Leonard. Sort of. It's a really weird kind of adorable to me, where it's just like, you know, at, at the same time, I see that his horse also has these whack-ass bendy legs, which is that one one of those issues that I talked about before, where it's just like, it, it walks it walks like hunched. <laughs> and at the same time, it's super, it's just super hilarious to have this buff-ass threatening killing machine of a person, cursed man, whatever, right? This tiny steed. Even though Leonard's animation is weird, he's got personality. He's got emotional weight. He's got a actual physical weight sitting on his back. It's General Radon, who is my boyfriend. Rest in peace. That's the kind of horse that I could do with more of. One that breaks the rules, but in the right way. Horses don't just make it faster to get from one place to another. There are companions, and a good horse can make a greater game.